In this video, we will take a look at how the special purpose registers work in a von Neumann CPU. If you would like to learn how the fetch decode execute cycle works, or how cache is used to store and access frequently used data, watch these videos. We have previously covered how programs are written into RAM, and how the CPU uses the fetch decode execute cycle to work its way through the program. This time, we will use this simple program that keeps counting up, available under the presets menu point. Before running the simulation, Let's briefly discuss the special purpose registers. Already discussed the clock, program counter, current destruction register, and accumulator in the previous video. So we will only focus the additional registers and units. The control unit is a complex unit where instructions are decoded and which allocates resources and controls the flow of information in the CPU. The arithmetic logic unit is where the CPU completes arithmetics. In other words, mathematical operations and where logical comparisons happen. The ALU is what actually does the computing. Also worth noting that the accumulator is actually a part of the arithmetic logic unit. The memory address register is used to point to the memory location that the CPU needs to access currently. It is like a satnav that helps the CPU find where in memory it needs to look. Every time the CPU needs to access RAM, whether to fetch instructions or load or store data, it uses the memory address register to find the memory address it needs to work with. The memory data register is a kind of stopping point between the CPU and RAM when data is transferred between the two. Whether data goes from RAM to the CPU or from the CPU to the RAM, the data goes through the MDR. We can think of it like an airlock on a spaceship. Just like people can't go straight from the spaceship into outer space and vice versa without going through the airlock, instructions and values can travel between RAM and CPU without going through the memory data register. Let's run the simulation. The clock ticks, indicating a new cycle. Because an instruction must be fetched, the CPU looks at the program counter, and as the program has just started, it is set to zero. The CPU now knows which address to access, but it doesn't yet know how to find it. The CPU must put the address into its setnav, so it can find the specific location in memory. Address zero is therefore loaded into the memory address register, and now the CPU knows how to find address 0. The address is located and the instruction is fetched. We are fetching data from RAM into the CPU. And as you remember, all data must go through the CPU's airlock. So the instruction is loaded into the memory data register. From here, the CPU can decide what to do with the data. Instructions must go to the current instruction register and values must go to the accumulator. As the MDR is currently handling an instruction, it is moved to the current instruction register. With the instruction having been fetched, the program counter must be incremented, so it points to the address of the next instruction to be fetched. This completes the fetch part of the cycle. The instruction can now be sent into the control unit, which decodes the instruction. The instruction is load 30, meaning load the contents of memory address 30 into the accumulator. Execute. Once again, the CPU must access a location in memory. And the only way it can do this is by moving the required memory address into its satnav, the memory address register. Knowing the route to the memory address, it can now locate address 30. The content of the address is now sent back to the CPU, and once again, data has to take a stop at the MDR. As the data is now a value, this time it is forwarded to the accumulator. This completes the first cycle. The clock ticks, and the new cycle begins. As always, the cycle starts with checking the program counter for the address of the next instruction to be fetched. Once again, the address must be loaded into the setnav so the CPU can find the address in memory, so it is moved to the MAR. Now the CPU can locate memory address 1 and fetch the instruction into the airlock. As the data in the memory data register is an instruction, it goes to the current instruction register. With the instruction having been fetched, the program counter now must be incremented so it points to the address of the next instruction. The instruction can now be decoded in the control unit and the CPU learns that it has to add the contents of memory address 31 to the value stored in the accumulator. As an addition is about to be performed, the number in the accumulator is moved to another register to leave room for the next number. Execute. As a memory location must be accessed, the address has to be loaded into the MAR so the CPU can find its way there. Address 31 is located and the content is loaded into the MDR. You might start to see how different registers work together at this point. 
As the data is a value, it is moved to the accumulator. With both numbers available, the ALU performs the addition and returns the result back to the accumulator. The second cycle is now complete. Let's go through the third cycle a bit faster. The clock ticks and the address of the next instruction is copied into the MAR. Now the processor can locate the instruction in memory and fetches it into the MDR. From the MDR, the instruction is moved to the current instruction register and with the fetch complete, the program counter is now incremented. The instruction is moved to the control unit to be decoded. The instruction says, store the contents of the accumulator back into memory address 30. As the RAM needs to be accessed, the address must be copied over to the memory address register. As data must be sent back to memory, that data has to be sent to the memory data register first. Remember, whether data goes in or out of the CPU, it must go through the MDR. Knowing the path to the memory location and having the data ready, the CPU finds the memory address and stores the value back in there, overwriting the previous value. This concludes the cycle and another one can begin. The clock ticks, the address of the next instruction is copied from the program counter into the MAR and the instruction at address 3 is fetched into the MDR. From here, it is moved to the current instruction register and with the fetch complete, the program counter is incremented. The control unit decodes the instruction and now you can see why the program counter must be incremented straight after an instruction was fetched. A jump instruction changes the value stored in the program counter, allowing the CPU to jump to a specific instruction, in this case, back to the instruction at memory address 0, creating a loop. If the program counter were to be incremented after this point, the next instruction carried out would not be address 0, but address 1. So this is why it is crucial to always update the program counter right after an instruction has been fetched. At this point, we are back to the beginning. The program counter is set to 0, meaning that the next instruction carried out will be load 30 at address 0, but this time the value 2 will be loaded into the accumulator. After this, 1 will be added to the 2, which is then stored back into memory, and we once again jump back to 0, looping forever. This brings us to the end of this video. If you would like to learn how cache is used to store and access frequently used data, or how to write more complex programs on a machine code level using Bitmachine, click one of these videos. If you would like to give Bitmachine a go yourself, click the link in the description.